Hello everyone. Um, I wanted to share with you the book I'm reading. It's called The Abandonment of the Jews by David Wyman. The truth. But what is the truth? Read David Wyman's courageous, lucid, painful book and you too will learn it. Read it and you will lose all your illusions. Within the context of war, the destiny of persecuted Jews carried too little weight to tip the scales in their favor. How else explain the semi-indifference of an FDR face with the agony of the European Jewry? How justify the anti-Semitic political tendencies of some of the higher officials in the Department of State? How understand the passivity? The Jews were abandoned, and once they were delivered to their butchers, they could no longer count on anybody, not even on those of their people who were living free in America. Sad and revolting as it might sound, both the major Jewish organizations and the most powerful figures of the Jewish community could not or did not want to form a unified rescue commission specificity of most Jewish leaders in the United States. David Wyman, gifted thinker and historian, tries to answer these questions. And his answers hurt. All those Jews waiting for help that does not arrive, and will never arrive. All those refugees lining up in front of consulate doors, returning home in the evening with an empty heart and empty eyes. All those children who could have been saved from a fatal trip to Auschwitz had it not been for the slow and sensitive bureaucracy, all those unused visas, all those unheeded appeals, all those useless screams. How can we not be ashamed of the hypocrisy behind the Evian conference or of the cynicism that dominated the Bermuda conference? It also seems as if both diplomats and statements spent more time inventing reasons not to save the Jews than trying to find a way to save the Jews. Instead, the, in, in, indeed, the title of this book is a perfect reflection of its content. The Jews were abandoned, and once they were delivered to their butchers, they could no longer count on anybody, not even on those of their people who were living free in America. Sad and revolting as it might sound, both the major Jewish organizations and the most powerful figures of the Jewish communities could not or did not want to form a unified rescue commission. Peter Bergson and his group, who, whose energy and devotion the author praises highly, were held back for political or personal reasons. Rabbi Stephen Weiss, was already burdened with too many responsibilities. As for the other leaders, most of them were much too busy thinking of the post-war period and of the necessity of establishing a nationwide Jewish homeland to give much attention to the rescue operations. The Biltmore Conference barely touched upon the tragedy of European Jews. And as for the debates of the American Jewish Conference, they devoted one session to the question in December, I'm sorry, in September 1943. Just one session. And not even a plenary one at that. Meanwhile, from over occupied Europe, trains kept arriving at Berkmoor. When the American government, under joint pressures of the Berks and group in a public opinion decided to found the war refugee board it was already too late it was too late for pure polish jews it was too late for dutch jews it was too late for french jews proud as we 
are of the gen generosity that America showed in fighting against Nazi Germany, we are embarrassed and dismayed by its behavior towards Hitler's Jewish victims. Roosevelt's politics was only part of the problem. The rest had to do with the particular mood of the country at the time. Da David Wyman provides us with a few striking instances of it. The Congress's unequivocal oppositions to immigration, the Christian Church's near silence, the press's burial of news and of the death factories in the back pages of the newspapers. It is all very clear. This open, generous country closed its doors and its hearts to the European Jews of the ghettos. Even in 1945, after the victory, it still did not want to have anything to do with them. This is why it is so important to read, to reread, and to encourage others to read this distur disturbing book. It might help us understand how, by abandoning a people, we can jeopardize our own future.